Corinthians 1 and 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone have a testimony? I mean, song quest. <laughs> Can we sing in the Mall's book, uh, Revive Us Again, page 
from all fear. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we think we'll fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. to speak a word uh, you, Jim. concerning uh, the church that's in Israel that Marvin Rosenthal is the author of. Uh, there is no land in Jerusalem to build a, a church house on. It's all taken up. Well, Yet they have a church there. And it's large. Now where is it at? It's in Jerusalem. And yet there's no land to build it on. Where's it at? In somebody's house. Huh? In somebody's house. No, sir. It's a large building. And it's built on top of a large building. A flat roof. All the buildings over there are flat roofs. And this one particular building is three stories high. And they built on top. And the strange thing, the, the enemy doesn't bother the building. If it was on the ground, they would try to destroy it. Mm -hmm. It's very odd. Mm -hmm. And the name of the church is Zion's Hope. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the, the church house. children. Uh, two of them got saved at an early age, but they went out into the world. They know the way to the Heavenly Father. And my grandchildren, uh, my granddaughter, uh, she needs prayer. Uh, She's gone into a world that, and she told me she was a Christian, which my granddaughter even came to this church. She was raised in church. And she's always had a religious spirit about her. But she has never been saved. It was a familiar. She went to church and learned in the church. And you know, Satan goes to church every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she needs prayer. And she's the only granddaughter I got. Not that I love her more. But God made her a woman. And she's a beautiful woman. And, you know, I've got a burden for her. And I went to church the other night because the lady come forth for prayer. And she had a blue shirt on, blue jeans, and she had a black pair of sandals that was cloth. And she stood up there, the preacher said, we're going to pray for some, so she's sick. If you believe in healing, you come forward. So I went up, and there was a man behind me with her hand on her stomach. And the man moved my hand on over a little bit. I assume it was her husband, I don't know. But nevertheless, we prayed for her, and her stomach is so bad. She's got stents in her stomach, and it won't hold the bowels. And, you know, I know what that's like to go through tests for bowels and all that. And, you know, I've got a burden for her, but, you know, she's going to get that healing. She may have to go down here to Ohio, which she said if she didn't get here, she'd get there. But God will heal her. Because, you know, if we didn't believe in healing, we wouldn't take that step up there. Yeah. We wouldn't do it. A person can't get saved unless the Spirit draws them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
That, that's what we need. We need God's Holy Spirit to just, boom, a revival to just take this nation and every nation by storm. Because the trumpet's going to sound, and you know, I witnessed to everybody said, well, you can push people away from God. You know, I want to push them away from the flames of hell is what I want to do. Amen. So you all just pray for my granddaughter and, and my grandson. He's, they're all messing up. But you know, I don't care what devil tries to show me. I'm still going to pray for them. I'm still going to do my best for them that God gives me the strength to do. And praise God, I, when I got home Sunday, my son came and brought me an angel with the light in. Well, my other son, he called and wished me happy Mother's Day. And glory to God, come Monday morning, here come my son with the Bible. And it says, it's, it's a women's Bible. And it's a King James. Study Bible. And he was just beaming. Huh. And he said, Mom, I started to get you flowers. But he said, I'm no coming to you, oh, Jesus. Amen. So, you know, that was just a blessing. And the Lord's sure. dealing with him. I've noticed the last two or three times that he has mellowed out. He will listen before he would change the subject. And now I know his ears are open to hear God's word. Amen. So y'all just hold him up in prayer. He's a good person, but being good don't get you to heaven. That's you right. got to come through the blood and through the cross of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You're a thief or a liar. There's no other way. So just keep him in prayer. And remember, I'm a Jean, not, I'm a Jean, but Leanna's children this morning, they're unsaved. And Mikey's not been here. And Sadie, she's not came back. I went over and biked her. And, and Leo, and you know, they're blessed to take them walk away with this church. Because so many people drive miles, miles, miles. So, you know, uh, God's going to do a work here. Yes, he and, is. And Amen. you know, when I think of, of you, Ray Ray, I think of Joshua. You're a little Joshua. I heard you singing <laughs> this morning and, and the same things you say. And, and God's going to do the mighty work in you. Amen. So, you know, we got to hold our children up in prayer. We've got to hold our pastor up in prayer. All those is preaching the blood and the cross. Because, you know, time is at hand. So, you all just pray for us, and we do pray for each and every one of you. Bless your heart, Kings. I have a very good friend of mine at work. Um, almost two weeks ago, she had two brain aneurysms to rupture. And she's been on life support now all that time, and they've done test after test. And she has very minimal brain activity, and they don't think it's going to get any better. So they're trying to decide now if they're going to continue on with the life support or if they're going to go ahead and take her off and see what happens. And she's not doing good. She has a mentally uh, handicapped son that she was taking care of. And also, um, we have neighbors that are doing without um, you know, I think their electric's going to shut off and stuff, and I feel real bad for them, so please pray for them. And I don't think they go to church. Amy, could you say one more prayer? Lord, be blessed you this morning, Lord. We thank you ever so much, Father God, for your precious spirit, Lord, 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 Lord,
each and every one of us that's here this morning. Lord, God, we come with one accord. God, God let's Sister worship Hale you in spirit and truth. God. And Father God, Lord, tomorrow we pray you. Lord God, he said, if you love me, you learn of me. God, this is the study of your Lord Jesus. Lord God, we just ask that your Lord to use that into abundant blessing, your Lord, in that church and there, your Lord. Father, help us, your Lord God, just to grow in your word and your grace and your knowledge, your Lord. And we just pray, Father God, Lord, for their eyes to be open, your Lord God. And, and God, we can trust you. You cannot lie. Lord, we thank you for the little boy that was saved. Father, God, that you sent your Lord. Father, God, Lord, that that Lord, 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 we know that there is nothing too hard for you, dear Lord God. Just one touch, just one word, Father. And Lord God, that you can make everything all right, Father. Lord, we just pray that you use this affliction and help them, dear Lord God, to trust more fully in you, dear Lord God, Father. So we cast study, all of our care Lord. upon so you, God, Father. And be with us this and Lord God, we pray for the family that's doing Lord, without, Father. To Help them to know, dear Lord God, God, that you can supply Bless all of our needs and afford to your riches and glory by Christ Lord, Jesus. And in this Father God, Lord, Lord, we just ask you, Father God, Lord, to touch pray. their hearts and draw them to you in Jesus' name. See 16 in the red book. <coughs> Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises. howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises promises I now can see, perfect present cleansing in the blood for me, standing in the liberty where Christ makes free, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by the strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing.
flesh. I won't fight. <laughs> Auto fight. <laughs> she nibbles every now and then, so you better watch her. You can sit beside Ray Ray. You want to sit with me? He wants to, I know he does. Well, we've been talking about reasons to worship God. Um, now we're going to talk about some ways that we can worship God. Um, we already know that one way to worship is by obeying Him. We talked about that before. Can y'all think of some other ways that you can worship God? <clears throat> when we sing, Amen. we're worshiping God. When we sing, we um, have our mind on Him and that's a, a way to worship Him. Or if we play an instrument, if you um, remember up at Hazel Creek that um, Karen, she had the tambourine. Well, she would do that. She didn't do it every time, but sometimes she would, you know, get the, feel the Holy Spirit, and she'd grab her tambourine, yeah, and she'd start shaking that. her tambourine. Mm -hmm. um, you can dance. Um, you can lift your hands up and praise the Lord. Can you think of, of any other ways you can worship? Pray. Pray. Read the Word. There are all kinds of different ways. You can clap your hands. You can cry. Yeah. That's a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just I'll just cry. <laughs> Me too. And sing the song. Yes. Driving down the road. And I'll, mm -hmm. I pull over. Yeah. yeah. Um, a testimony. That's a way to worship God. Stand up and t and testify and tell people what the Lord has done. You know, talking about Him and um, you know that's that's a way to worship God. We can give gifts. Reaching. Reaching. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's all kinds of different ways you can worship God. Um, we're going to talk about today about um, giving gifts. We're going to talk about somebody who gave a gift that um, you know it was it's, it was a way to worship. Um, you can turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter four. Starting verse one. Tiller of the ground. Tiller of the ground. So Abel was a keeper of the sheep. He took care of the animals. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a gardener. He grew vegetables and, and things. Okay, Rusty. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord.
unto Cain and to his offering. He had not respect, and Cain was very wroth. And he his countenance. His countenance. Oh. He was mad. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why art thou wroth? And why is the countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin. <coughs> So what kind of offering did Cain bring? Both of them were bringing gifts. Both of them brought a gift to God, right? To, um, you know, to make an offering. What kind of a gift did Cain bring? In uh, verse 3, it said, And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. He brought him some Food, brought some vegetables or some fruit um, to give an offering to the Lord. What kind of offering did Abel bring? Verse 4, it says, And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. He brought the best he had. He brought the first, um, the first of the, of the, you know, the flock. He, he didn't bring what was left over. He brought the first. He brought the best as an offering. And um, which one did, did the Lord have respect to? He had respect to Abel's offering. Why is that? It was the best. He gave the best. He gave with faith. I mean, he, you know, he had... Um, 
you know, an animal to offer up. He, he didn't know if there were going to be others for his family to eat. He, he was just trusting God, you know, I'm, go I'm going to give this to you. This is, this is yours. You'll provide some way for us. You know, I'm going to give you the best that we have and the first that we have. God wants, wants us to give the first of, of everything. He doesn't Amen. want us to put him last. He doesn't want us to give him the leftovers, Amen. Um, the scraps. He wants the first. Um, turn to Hebrews now, Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 4. Let's see. Hebrews work. Hebrews chapter 11. You got it on? No. Right here. Okay. Verse 4. Just read verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God and more excellent service. Sacrifice then came by which he obtained. obtained witness that he was righteousness, he was God, righteous. righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, he yet speaks. Um, God testified of his gifts. You know, this was a more excellent sacrifice because he gave. He gave out faith. He did this. He gave. Um, he gave by faith. He didn't, um, you know, just give. You know, well, I need this, so you, Lord, I'm just going to give you what's left over. Um, and his in his um, sacrifice that was more excellent than Cain's. Now turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Chapter. How can you give a gift to God? Romans chapter 12, right here. Verse 1, 2. Okay, Autumn, you read verse 1. this world, but 
So um, God wants us to present ourselves. God wants us to um, to live for Him. He wants us to, and He doesn't need, you know, He doesn't need our gifts. He just wants our love. Amen. Um, he wants us to put Him first. Amen. We need to give Him our first place. Um, now, what are some ways that you can you can give gifts to God? That you can give him your first links. Anybody got any ideas? Well, let's say you're you've got a decision um, to come to church or to stay home and watch TV. Which one church. Church. you should get up and go to church, shouldn't you? Mm -hmm. You should show your love to God. Um, how about if you're, um, you know, if you're talking to somebody and you feel like saying something mean? Should you say something mean to them? No, you shouldn't. You should show your love to God. You should, if you can't say anything nice, just don't say anything. That's the best thing. Lord. Amen. Um, when you wake up in the morning, this is where I fail a lot. We wake up in the morning, we should give God our the first of our time. Amen. You know, we're all in a rush in the mornings. You know, we get up, we gotta take the dogs out, we gotta eat some breakfast, we gotta have school, we gotta brush our teeth, you know, we've got all kinds of things to do. I've got laundry to do, and I'm like, I just don't have time to do everything. Well, I need to give God the first of my time, not wait until the end of the day and give Him the time that I have left over. I need to give Him the first of my time uh, and trust that He's going to provide and let everything else get, get finished. Um, we can give an offering we can give money when we give money that's that's a gift we're giving God God doesn't need our money but if we give him the first of our money and trust that he's gonna just like Marie was saying he is gonna meet all of our needs there's no reason in worrying about it we just we need to give him the first of, um, of our offering of our money he just he just wants us to love him and trust him to show to show our love by you know by trusting him that's showing our love. Okay, let's go over our memory verse. Let's read through it once and then we'll see who can remember it without looking. Mm -hmm. Matthew one twenty one. And she, she shall, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I'll do it. All right, right, right. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Good. Let's try. Okay. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And they shall. For he shall. Second Samuel, first and second Kings, first.
first and second chronicles. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalm of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Job, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nehu, Habakkuk, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians. First and second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James. First and second Peter, first John, second John, third John, Jude and Revelation.
You know what he did say this morning? He said, I was watching Calvary and I didn't think he paid attention. He said, Yeah, when we get to heaven, he said, We'll be like a little baby. Oh, that's not You know the song that Sunday and Jesus wants me to love Sunday? No. Sing it. It says, Sunday, the Sunday. Jesus wants me for a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, I'll be a Sunday for him. Amen. Hmm. You've never heard that one? No. You want to try it? Sunday, a Sunday, Jesus wants me for a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday. Rocking chair can't get you there. Is that it? Sounds alright. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Something else here, I'm sorry. tells us, and uh, one of the things that I enjoy the most uh, about that study is um, if you look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. So the blood of Jesus testifies. Amen. The blood of Jesus speaks is what it says there. And... Uh, I was particularly I was particularly blessed uh, about uh, 
about the, the sacrifice that she mentioned, about the sacrifice that, that Abel gave, how that it was a sacrifice of faith. Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of people today in today's society that have faith in a lot of different things. They have faith in, in maybe the, their finances or their job or they have uh, faith in uh, their health or they have faith in one another. But where is our faith anchored? Amen. It's in Jesus. Amen. Our faith is anchored. The Bible tells us to look in unto Jesus, uh, the author of our faith. Amen. Amen. So our faith is anchored in Christ. Well, uh, Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden. And when they sinned, God gave the very first sacrifice. Amen. God gave the very first sacrifice. And Adam and Eve, they took the things of the ground and they tried to cover their sin with fig leaves. Amen. Didn't they? Didn't they try to take the things of the ground that was cursed and to cover their sin? And they took the fig leaves and they tried to cover their nakedness with fig leaves. But God killed an animal and covered them with animal skins. Yes, and so God set forth from the very beginning that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It took a blood sacrifice. It's still the same, glory be to God. It has not changed. It takes a blood sacrifice to please God. Amen. And hallelujah. Uh, Abel saw mom and dad. He, he had learned from mom and dad's how mom and dad's sin was taken care of. And, well, I need to follow what mom and dad have, have taught me. Then that's the only way is by blood. And the blood of Abel, the blood of Christ speaks better things than that of Abel's blood. Abel's blood cried out from the ground, and he and he no doubt cried for that my brother has killed me and, and this terrible thing has happened. But amen, I'm glad that the blood of Jesus says, Father, forgive them, amen. for they know not what they do. I'm glad that the blood of Jesus it speaks better things than that of Abel's. It, it's, it's a blessing. Amen. Jesus is all throughout the Word of God. Amen. All throughout the Word of God, and I'm glad that it takes His precious blood. It hasn't changed. His blood takes away our sin. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, when he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold Amen. the Lamb Hallelujah. of God, Amen. which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus is a Lamb uh, without spot and without blemish, Amen. who verily was foreordained before the foundation of this world, but was manifest in these last times for you. I'm so glad that, amen, that Jesus was not an afterthought. He was not something that God said, well, I need to come up with a plan of salvation. He was foreordained before the foundation. 1 Peter 1 and 19, He was foreordained before the foundation of this world. Yes, the Lord. As a lamb without blemish and without spot. I'm so glad for who He is today that He takes away our sin. Amen. I'm so thankful for Sister Maria's testimony because it goes right along with today's message. I'm so thankful for Sister Robin's teaching because it goes right along with today's message. You know what? We need as Christians to have daily victory in our life. Amen. I'm not talking about a victory that happened. Amen. I was saved eight years ago. I'm not talking about a victory that I had eight years ago. I'm talking about today. Amen. I'm talking Lord. about having victory today and victory tomorrow Amen. and victory every day. Hallelujah. The Bible of the Lord told Joshua, He said, Every place that the sole of thy foot shall tread upon, that have I Amen. given to you, as I said unto my servant Moses. Amen. So, brother, I, I, everywhere we go, <laughs> we can live in victory. Every day that we live, we can live in victory. I'm so glad for the Christian life. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to live as a Christian. Amen. It excites me every day. I, it doesn't get old. Amen. Jesus said that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come Hallelujah. that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yeah. Amen. Jesus desires for you to have an abundant life. Amen. Not just in the sweet by and by in the sky, but brother, today. Amen. He wants you to live in victory today. Amen. Glory be to God. 
That's what he has promised. That's what we're saying there. Standing on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let the praises ring. Amen. 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 Praise Him today. Amen. So look with me if you would. At Romans chapter 9. We're going to look at Romans chapter 9. And we're going to read from beginning at verse 30. I love the book of Romans. Amen. How about you? I love the book of Romans. There is so much good, good scripture. It's, it's all good, but I just particularly love the book of Romans. And the Bible tells us here, Romans uh, chapter 9 and verse 30, the Bible says, What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Father Almighty, in the name of Jesus, my precious Savior, your wonderful Lamb that you gave for us, dear Lord. We praise you, Father, for this day that you've created. For God, we know that all things that you make are good. And Father, we praise you, my Savior God, Lord, for these words that you've given us. Father God, that's forever settled in heaven that never changes. Father God, Lord, I pray that you hide me behind the cross and anoint my lips, dear Lord. And Father, open our hearts, our minds, and our souls that we might receive your perfect word. That, Father God, that we might grow thereby and give you honor and glory in our daily lives, dear Lord, throughout, dear Lord, all eternity. And Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. amen. The Bible tells us here that Israel, that they followed after the law of righteousness, but they did not attain the law of righteousness. They desired to be righteous and to have righteousness. In other words, to be at peace with God and to please God and to honor God, but they have not attained it. But the Bible says that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, in other words, who were sinners, they have attained righteousness, the righteousness of faith. Because they, the, the, why didn't Israel re receive it is because in verse 32, they sought it not by faith, but by the works of the law. They desired to please God by what they could do instead of what, by what God has said. Brother, you cannot please God outside of what God says. You can have faith in all kinds of things, but brother, you must have faith in the finished work of Calvary or you will not Hallelujah. have the victory. Amen. You can have God. faith in all kinds of things. You can have faith in church attendance. You can have faith in Bible reading. You can have faith in all sorts of things, but it must Amen. be in one simple thing, and that's what Christ has done. Hallelujah. When he cried from the cross, yes, it is finished. The Bible says, where because they sought it not by faith, but by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. They consider Jesus offensive. Even today, the Jewish people who do not believe Christ, they consider Jesus offensive. You know what Jesus said? He said, Blessed is he, whosoever is not offended in me. Amen. You know what? It's good to not be offended in Jesus Christ. It's a blessing. It, it, brother, it stirs my soul to think about who Jesus is. They stumbled at Jesus because they thought, man, I have been good. I have kept the law my whole life and I deserve to go to heaven. I deserve to be righteous with God. But Jesus said, no. No, it's by faith. Amen. It's, and that's why they hated Him. They hated Him because He said, it's by faith in the Son of God. And that you're automatically, blessed is the man, as the psalmist wrote in Psalm 32, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. 
in whose spirit there is no guile and whose transgression is covered. Amen. And to impute means for, for, for righteousness to be simply given and, and, and put inside of you. Brother, uh, the Bible says that he was a stone of stumbling and whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Glory be to God, Jesus said, he said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and that house fell not because it was founded upon a rock. Amen. Brother, our faith must be anchored in this stone of stumbling, this rock of offense, uh, and we'll not be ashamed. Amen. I'm going to ask you some questions this morning. Did y'all know you're going to have a test? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's, they're going to have some questions. There, there, believe it or not, there are Christians who are imprisoned by the devil. There are Christians who are in prison. Did you know that we're at war? Amen. Sure. We're at war. Amen. There is a warfare that goes on every day. Amen. It goes on inside of some of us and most of us. And it goes on around us. Amen. There are spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Brother, wherefore take on me, take you the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Because we're at war. Amen. You are at war from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that God fights for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you? Hallelujah. He'll keep you. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. My God protects me and my family when we sleep. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. But there are Christians who are imprisoned. Let me ask you a question. Say you're an American and you're fighting in World War II or Vietnam or whatever and you get captured by the enemy. And they put you in a prisoner of war camp. Are you still an American? Yes. You're still an American. You are still an American. Just the same way as there are Christians who are who are held, being held captive by the enemy. And brother, you're still a Christian. But brother, you need to be made free. Jesus says, who the Son sets free, he shall be free indeed. Hallelujah, we need to be made free. So what are some of the, some, one of the, some of the questions uh, of how can you tell if you're imprisoned by the enemy? Number one, are you ashamed of your Christian life? Do you go through your daily life and do you at times feel ashamed of your walk and your testimony? Hmm. You know the enemy uses shame Number two, do you find yourself constantly questioning your ability to serve and please God? Do you constantly look and, and say, that, that, may I tell you what, I constantly fail, I constantly falter, I can't get the victory, I'm, the, the enemy just wears me out day after day, week after week, month after month. Do you question this? Does it seem like you can never do enough? Does it seem like you can never do enough to please God? Oh, the, what the Bible say there about Cain? His countenance fell and he was wroth. Amen? He was wearing himself out, wasn't he? He said, my punishment is more than I can bear. Do you feel that no matter how hard you try, that you are not as good as other Christians you know? That you see other Christians and you say, boy, if I could just be like that. I mean, glory be to God, I'm glad for brothers and sisters in the Lord that, hallelujah, that let their light shine and glory be to God are a wonderful uh, testimony for Jesus. But then there's Christians who are imprisoned, imprisoned in their mind by Satan that, that beat themselves up day after day because they see someone else that does wonderful things for the Lord and they question the, their, their own ability and the things that they, do, that they do. Do the comments and ridicules of others cause you to even doubt your own personal salvation? Did you know that's one of the... I've heard preachers say it before, and it's a sad thing, but, but in the church, the church is often... It's one of the only uh, 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 armies 
uh, that, that, that hurts, they're wounded. You know what? I want you to know that this place is a sanctuary. Hallelujah. This place is a yes, place Lord. for you to heal. Yes, Lord. This is a place you can come yes, and brother, you can pray yes, and I tell you, hallelujah. we'll love yes, you with all of yes, our heart and we'll hallelujah. do everything we can, hallelujah, to be a vessel for yes, God, Lord. to bless you and to help you and strengthen you yes, for the battles that you face from day to day to give God glory. Amen. Yes, Lord. That's what this place is supposed to be. It's a sanctuary. Amen. It's a haven. It's a place for your soul to be nourished and to be fed and to be strengthened. Brother, the, any of these things. So then there's the captive sinner. There's the sinner that has excuses why not to be a Christian. They may say, well, I cannot live like a Christian. I can't live a Christian life. How many of you heard that before? Some say, well, I'm not ready to change my lifestyle. Some say, well, I can't, I can't quit my drinking. I can't quit my smoking. Dope. I can't quit my drugging or cursing. And then there's some that say, well, I can't, I can't uh, go around Christians. I feel like I, I, I feel bad when I'm around Christians and I don't, I don't, I don't want to go around them because they make me feel bad. Church makes me feel uncomfortable. Someone may not actually say this, but in their heart, this is what they're thinking. It makes me feel uncomfortable. How many of you, when you first were new or lost and you came to church, you felt uncomfortable? Brother, I was uncomfortable. Amen. 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 I got uncomfortable when the preacher started preaching, when people started shouting, and Karen got out her tambourine and started dancing. I was uncomfortable. But hallelujah, now it thrills my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, I was a sinner. When the time is right, I'll get saved. One day, I'll do it. Don't you count on it, brother. Don't you count on it. There's scriptures that go along with each one of these. Some say, well, I don't have time to serve God. I'm too busy. Listen, all of these are deceptions by Satan Amen. to keep you in captivity, to keep your family in captivity, to keep your friends and your neighbors in in captivity, these are deceptions uh, of the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Bible says that I, the Lord, search the heart uh, and try the way it reigns uh, to give every man according to his ways. Uh, now, brother, God will search our hearts and reveal uh, what's in our hearts. Listen, you can be a Christian, but you're in captivity. God, uh, God desires for you to be made free. Amen. So, brother... I want to tell you the truth today. Amen. I want you to know the truth. You know that's all you have to do? That's all we need to do as Christians is just tell the truth, God's Amen. truth. Amen. Jesus prayed in the garden in John 17, which is the Lord's prayer when the Lord actually prayed and made an intercession for you and I and for his disciples. And he said, thy word is truth. Amen. God's word is truth. And brother, I want to tell you the truth today. Now listen, you have to make a decision whether you're going to listen to the truth and take heed to the truth. As Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. The truth today is, is that good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. I've heard, I've heard it said before, and brother, I, I don't agree about it. I've heard preachers say that to live the Christian life is hard. It is a hard life to live. Brother, that is not what the Word of God says. Amen. The Word of God tells me that good understanding... Get a, brother, we need to understand the Word of God. Amen. Yes, Amen. The, 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 the brother, the, 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 tells us, the Bible tells us to study, to show thyself approved, a, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. We need not go by tradition. We need not go by the commandments of men. We need not go by the, thing, the, the, the history. We need to go by what God says in God's Word. Allie. And the God's Word, amen, makes us free. Amen. And ye shall know the truth, Hallelujah. and the truth shall make you free. Amen. 
Isn't that what Jesus said in John chapter, chapter 8? The truth makes us free. So God desires not for us just to know the truth, but to understand the truth. God desires for us to understand it. And there's no way that we can understand it, brother, other than by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to put out every preconception that this world gives us and look to God and say, Lord God, what? Tell me the truth of what this means. Amen. The Bible says in Jeremiah 6 and 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see. Ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. How many of you desire? I guarantee if you're in captivity, if the enemy has weared you out day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year since you've been uh, saved, or maybe uh, uh, you've seen him wear out your, your, uh, your, your children or wear out your neighbor or wear out your friend and they're in captivity, I guarantee you, brother, you would love to see them have rest. You would love to have rest yourself Amen. when the enemy has just constantly bombarded you and, and just wore out your mind. I tell you, brother, that stress is a terrible thing, and that's exactly what the enemy will do. He will try his best to wear you out. So you have a choice today. You have a choice. The Bible tell, the, 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 it tells us there that we can have rest for our souls. So our choice is, is what Jer Joshua said. He said, choose you this day whom you shall serve. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to choose. You have a choice to make each day of if, if you're going to, to believe the truth or if you're going to believe Satan who is a liar. You see, the Bible said that in John chapter 8 that, that Jesus said that Satan is a liar and the father of it. Yes. And he will lie and he doesn't want you to know the truth. We need, amen, glory be to God, to know the truth of God. And brother, we need to take the things that God says to show us the truth. Amen. So what do we need? We need God's measuring ruler. Now hallelujah, there's a lot of things. You know, everybody understands a, a ruler that you measure things with and you, and you, and you uh, 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 line up things. Well, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 10, he says, we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. What this scripture is saying is those who will compare themselves to one another are not wise. That when, when a man looks at somebody else and sees in somebody else that, uh, that uh, well, this person's, I'm just as good as this person, so why do I need Jesus? Or you see some, or there might be some that say, well, you know what? Uh, uh, I'm not as bad as him. So I'm going to heaven. I haven't killed nobody. I haven't lied. I haven't lied like this man has. Uh, I haven't stolen like that man has. Well, the Bible tells us here they're not wise that compare themselves among themselves. If we're going to compare ourselves, Let's look at what the Bible says in verse 13 who we're to compare ourselves. But we will not boast things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath to distribute to us, a measure to reach even unto you. That's the word of God. Amen. This is God's measuring rule. This is what God, this is what the, the, will, will judge men in the last day. Jesus said that I didn't come to condemn men. He says the word that I speak the same shall judge men in the last day. Amen. In John chapter 12. That is what will judge men is the word of God. Amen. It will judge Christians. Amen. Every man's work is going to be tried of what sort it is. Amen. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. Now, brother, so it's going, to try, it's going to try whether somebody's a Christian or not. And it's going to try the works of Christians whether it's good or whether it's bad. Whether it's wood, hay, and stubble or whether it's gold, silver, and precious stones. Now, brother, this is God's measuring ruler. Amen. Not the brother down the road. Not the preacher. If you're looking at me and comparing yourself to me to see if you're good enough and you're going to measure up, I'm going to tell you, I'll let you down. Sometime or another. You'll be able to find some fault, amen, either, either it's through your mind or through something that I do that's not going to be right. But I'm telling you right now that you can look at Jesus. Amen. 
You can look at Jesus and, and read God's Word. And brother, I tell you, He is the perfect, infallible Son of God. Hallelujah. He was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. And glory be to God when you realize that you can never Hallelujah. live up to what Jesus did. Uh, you can never uh, attain to the things that He did on your own. Uh, then glory be to God, you can trust Him. Amen. As the Word says here, but to Him that glorieth, let Him glory in the Lord. Amen. Let Him glory in the Lord. Rather than comparing ourselves to one another, that's one of the things that Satan will use to deceive you. The weapons, the Bible tells us that we are not ignorant of his devices. Amen. He would like to get you to compare yourself to somebody else. Somebody else would like to tell you how good they are and how loved <coughs> you are. Someone would like to say, well, you know what, I've done all this. And this is all you've done. And it makes them feel better about themselves. Brother, that's sin. That's sin. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measurement ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, and considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye, thy hypocrite? Amen. First cast out the beam that is in thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to pull the mote out of thy brother's eye. You know what a mote is? It's a speck of dust. It's a speck of dust. Jesus was talking, telling that to the Pharisees. See, the leaven or the sin of the Pharisees, one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible is Matthew chapter 23. You want to see how Jesus preached? Now, this is Jesus preaching in Matthew chapter 23. He called them snakes and vipers. <laughs> how shall you escape the damnation of hell? is what he said to them. You generation of snakes and vipers in Matthew 23. That's how Jesus preached. You, you don't hear that preaching on TV. You don't hear that kind of preaching. But G brother, Jesus hasn't changed. Amen. He's still the same. Thanks, Your Honor. I'll tell you what the religious spirit will do. A religious spirit, the leaven of the Pharisees, or hypocrisy, will bind heavy burdens on people that they themselves are not even willing to bear or will even move with one of their fingers. Sure. They, will put, they will put a religious a religious burden on you that you must do this and you must do this and you must do that and then you must do this other thing and then you haven't done it good enough even though you've tried to do it. Brother, I'm telling you, that is 11 of the Pharisees. It is a device of Satan to tear you down. Yeah. to keep you in captivity. The Bible says, glory be to God, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Amen. Brother, that tells me that the warfare that's going on, it goes on inside of our minds. And Satan would love to keep you captive. He would love for you not to have victory because he, would, he desires, brother, to, to make your life as miserable as possible while you're here until you go to heaven. He, would, he desires to make them. So we see here how the, Jesus said that they bind heavy burdens. He's speaking to the Pharisees in Matthew 23. They bind heavy burdens, grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. This is exactly... How Pharaoh was to the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 5. If you'd like to turn there and read with me in, in Exodus chapter 5, let's, let's look at the spirit of the Pharisees, the spirit of religion that tries to, that tries to tear down God's people. The Bible says that afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. Glory be to God. He said, let them go. I want them to be free. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. This is exactly how, what Satan will say. This is exactly what he's saying. He said, I don't regard God. He has no respect toward God. He said, I'll neither will I let Israel go. And they said, the God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go 
we pray thee three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people from their works? Get you to your burdens. This is exactly the spirit of religion. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people in the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick. And heretofore let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of bricks which they did make heretofore ye shall lay upon them, and ye shall not diminish aught thereof. thereof for they be idle, therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon them, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye and get you straw where you can find it. Ye, yet not all of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. And the officers and the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore? So they were supposed to continue making just as much brick as they did before, but they weren't going to be given the provisions that they needed uh, to make this brick. Uh, and then, brethren, they were not only to make what they did before, but they were to make more than what they did before without the provisions. And when they couldn't do it, they were beaten because of it. This is the enemy. Amen. This is the enemy. He wants to put burdens upon you that you cannot fulfill, that you can never feel like you're righteous. You can never feel like that you're, God, you're a child of God, that you're a child of the living King, uh, uh, that your inheritance is heaven. Uh, I tell you that God does not do this. Uh, my God supplies all my need. Uh, I'm thoroughly furnished unto good works. Uh, he is my shepherd and I shall not want. Uh, my young wives do like to suffer hunger. Uh, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. My God gives me everything that I need. Glory be to God. I tell you, if God doesn't supply you the need to be able to do it, then brother, you don't need to be doing it. Amen. The enemy will put heavy burdens on you. And he'll try to bear you down. The Bible says that the Pharisees, they do all their works to be seen of men. You know what Jesus said? Verily I say to you, they have their reward. I tell you what, I'd rather be rewarded from my heavenly Father than any man to pat me on the back. That's right. He says, ye blind guides, which strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. In other words, brother, they'll find some little thing, the enemy will find some little thing to pick at you about, yeah. and he'll just wear you out. He'll pour salt in that wound over and over again to try to tear you down as best he can. Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within you are full of extortion and excess. Even so ye outwardly appear righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. I'm so glad that God's concerned with the heart. Amen. He's not concerned with what we can do on the outside. He's concerned with the heart. <laughs> you see, brother... God wants us to live in daily victory, not just temporary victory, not just circumstantial victory, but glory be to God. The Bible says that verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. You know, it's still... Enough to simply believe. Amen. Sure. It's still enough to simply believe. I have heard it said time after time again, and brother, a, a righteous indignation wells up inside of me when I hear it. When they say, well, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe the Lord Jesus that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But you still need to do these other things. Listen, brother, that's what the Bible said. Believe. 
and confess Amen. and you're saved. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Confess Jesus. Believe Jesus. It's that simple. Amen. It's that simple. It's that simple for the day of salvation and it's that simple for every day to live in victory. There are people who are trying their best to be Christian. Listen to me. You do not try to be a Christian. Either you is or you ain't. Either you're a Christian or you're not. There is no in between. There is no trying to being a Christian. Now, Brother Troy, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me that I don't need to, to try to not sin? I'm telling you that if you'll believe what thus saith the Lord, you'll hate sin. Amen. You'll hate it. Yeah. You do not need to try to, to, to do the things, try to do the things to be a Christian. You Amen. do not need to do that. Jesus said here that well has Isaiah prophesied, saying that these people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Praise the Lord. There are folks who will say things about God. They have a form of godliness, Amen. but they deny the power thereof. Brother, I want you to know that Ray, Ray, Red, hallelujah, where the power of God is this morning when he opened the service, he said in 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. It comes through the cross, brother. It doesn't come through what you can Amen. say. It doesn't come through how good you can sing. It doesn't come through how good you can testify or how good you can preach. It doesn't come through any of those ways. It comes one way. He says, in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Brother, the one way, the one way to have daily victory is through submission. Now that's contrary to our flesh. Our flesh, our flesh, mankind's flesh, believes that you need to do something to gain victory. That you, brother, if somebody puts you in a hold, Rusty, Rusty was into wrestling there, and they put you in a hold, and they hold you in that hold, and you say, well, I got to, if you give up, tell me, what do you have to do to give up? You don't do anything to give up. You don't do anything to give up. You just give up. You submit. Submission is the key to daily victory. Brother Troy, this is making sense. It will. <laughs> Submission is how you're saved. That's how you continue in salvation. Submission. You don't glory be to God. Paul said, brethren, it's my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge or understanding. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk, that Habakkuk, it says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Brother, God desires for you to understand his perfect plan of salvation. Brother, it, it's infinitely complex, yet simple enough that a child can Amen. understand it. It's that simple. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not, what's that word? Submitted, Submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end for the law of righteousness to everyone that what? Believeth. Believeth. So glory be to God. Brother, they go about to establish their own righteousness. They have done all kinds of good things. There's even a, a, in the Old Testament an account where a man told another man, he says, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. And let me show you how, how good a Christian I am. Listen, brother. God desires for us to be submissive. Amen. Not submissive to the world. Mm -hmm. Not submissive to the world. The Bible says that Jesus said, For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, brother, that's, 
That's pretty righteous. I mean, these guys were, from the time they were born, their parents instructed them in the law and taught them to live according to the law of Moses. As Paul said, he says, I was circumcised of the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. He says, a, a Pharisee of the Pharisees in righteousness touching the law. Glory be to God. So he says but that in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 that God made Christ, made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Not the righteousness of the Pharisees. Not the righteousness of our brothers and sisters. I mean, as the man said when he, when he went into the, the, the synagogue to cast out the demon, he said, uh, he, he said to the man that was possessed with the demon, he says, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Yeah. He didn't say my God. I didn't, he didn't say my Jesus. He said, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. When Saul came back uh, from, from the, 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 the battle of the Amalekites and came to Samuel and the, the, the oxen and the sheep were bleeding, and crying out. And he says, have you fulfilled the commandment of the Lord? He says, yeah. He said, I did. And he says, well, what's the bleeding of the sheep and the lowing of the oxen? And he says, I've brought these back to, to sacrifice to your God. Yeah. He didn't say, my God. He says, I brought them back to sacrifice to your God. Brother, when that man, when he said, I adjure you by, Paul, by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth, the Bible said the demon left on him and sent him out of there naked and wounded. Listen, brother, it's a personal salvation. Amen. It's not the righteousness of the Pharisees. It's not the righteousness of the church. It's the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. God Almighty. Amen. By simply submitting. Amen. By simply giving in. So, you know what? I, I'm not going to see. I, I need to do this, and I need to do that tomorrow, and I need to go here, and I need to say that. Look, it's good to have good works. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 28, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast of. For we are his workmanship. Amen. A lot of people say the Bible contradicts itself. No. But there is a divine order. There is a divine order. Submission will bring forth righteous works. But righteous works cannot bring forth righteousness. Submission will bring forth righteous works. But righteous works will not bring forth righteousness. There is a divine order of God. God is a God of decency and order. Amen. There is a, a, an order, a hierarchy that must take place. There is no trying and submission. Amen. When you give up, when you give in to God, when you give in to His will, there's no more trying in yourself. Mm -hmm. It's simply listening. Listening and obeying Amen. the call of God's Spirit. My sheep know me. Hallelujah. And they hear my voice. Amen. And they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Amen. Neither shall any man pluck them from my hand. Amen. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And they shall, then no man is able to pluck them from my hand. Amen. My Father is greater than all. Hallelujah, brother. God desires for us to listen Amen. to His voice. Because I tell you, there's a voice that comes from inside of us, our conscience. <laughs> there's a voice that will come from the enemy. And there's a voice that comes from God. Brother, we need the discernment to know the truth. Amen. Glory to God. That is why David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart Amen. that I might not say. Brother, before it, listen, if it takes you five minutes to make a decision, that's okay. That's okay. But if the enemy, if something comes and you don't know the right thing to do, the right path to take, what does it say in the word of God? What does God's word tell me? The Bible says, glory be to God, that the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Hallelujah. Whatsoever I have said unto you. That's what Amen. Jesus said. He says the Comforter, he'll, he'll come. You see, they didn't have the Comforter in the Old Testament. They didn't have the Comforter. He was there with them physically with the disciples, yes. Jesus. But, but He said the Comforter, He says it is expedient for 
you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But I tell you that 2,000 years ago, Jesus hung on the cross uh, and He was buried and He was resurrected. Uh, and 50 days after uh, Jesus' resurrection on the day of Pentecost, Hallelujah. the Comforter came. Amen. Yes, it did. And He's here today with Amen. us. Yes, he, is. he says, where two or three are gathered, there will I be with you in the midst. Bless the Lord. He's here with us. You know Jesus Lord, comes to church. The Holy Lord. Ghost comes to church. Yes. Brother, I think I physically, I think yes. I physically, I mean, glory be to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. You might think I'm crazy, but I think I have physically seen him dancing in the church in yes. the congregation. Yes. Hallelujah. I tell you, he's real. Amen. Amen. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, nor whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can see the effects of that wind when it blows through the trees out there, and I can see the effects of the Holy Ghost on you. Amen. Hallelujah. There's no trying in submission. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Last week we were studying favor. Grace is unmerited favor. Amen. Favor that you can't earn. You cannot do enough to win the victory. You can't, brother, you can try all you want, but it takes submission. Amen. It takes submission. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. There's an order of hierarchy there. He didn't say resist the devil first, did he? What did he say? He said, submit first. Submit to God. Brother, whew, glory be to God. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Bless the Lord. You know, the sacrifices of God are a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Did you know that through the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better? That's what the Bible says. Brother, we get broken hearted and think, oh, God's not. Oh, he's nigh when you're down, brother. I want you to know. He didn't done forsake you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always. Bless the Lord. He is nigh, brother, especially when you're downhearted. Yeah. When you're, brother, he always causes us to triumph. We're cast down, but we're not forsaken. Hallelujah. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And you know, when we think of someone who's meek, we think of the term meek as a mouse. Someone who, who, who just, you know, simply has no defenses. And that's, and that's the that's modern definition of meek. I'm glad for the 1611 King James Bible, amen? Aren't you? The modern definition of meek means spiritless, without power, deficient in spirit, and courage. This is Webster's definition of meek. However, the archaic English language referred to the act of breaking a horse as meeking. You take a horse, a Clydesdale, brother that weighs 1,200 pounds, and that horse is broken, it's defined as meeking that horse. The strength of the horse is not diminished by the meeking pro process, Actually, its strength is focused for the horse's intended purpose, such as a gentle giant who has tremendous strength but only uses it for the appropriate purpose which it is given. Amen. Let me illustrate it in another way. When you go out here and you go to get on the interstate and you come up there and there's a sign, it's a triangle sign and it's red. And it's upside down triangle. What's it, what's, it, what's it saying? Yield. Yield. So you're to yield. You're coming off a smaller road onto this large interstate. And you must yield to the power of that strong, that interstate. I want you to know that that interstate and that highway, hallelujah, the Bible says, and there should be a way. <laughs> And it should be called the way of holiness. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> when we yield, we don't yield. We don't. We, yes, we're yielding our strength, our, our minuscule strength, but we're yielding it to a greater power. Amen. We're yielding it to an infinite power Hallelujah. of God Almighty, an infinite yeah. knowledge, an infinite presence. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, uh, Brother, an infinite holiness. 
that's not defined by time. We yield ourselves to God in order to be in the flow of God's power. We yield ourselves. We submit ourselves. We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that He lifts us up. Brother, this is the key to daily life. It's submission to the Holy Spirit. Submission to God's Word. It's submitting ourselves. Becoming weak that He may be strong. The Bible said that Jesus told us, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What kind of labor is Jesus talking about? Is He talking about out there slinging a, an axe, chopping a tree all day long? No, no, he's not talking about that. He was telling this to the religious sect of the Pharisees. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He's got these burdens, these, these grievous burdens that the enemy or some religious spirit has put upon you, and you feel like you can't ever attain to it. You even question your own salvation at times. You wonder if you can ever even please God. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon oh, you yes, and learn of me, yes, for I am meek and lowly. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, it's not hard to be a Christian. The way of a transgressor is hard. The way of a transgressor is hard. If we could, could we sing Blessed Assurance? Uh, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Have you submitted to him this morning? You know, Paul said, I protest by your rejoicing that I have in Christ Jesus. I die daily. Daily. Page 156 in the red book. Sorry. <laughs> If you'd, like to, if you'd like to pray this morning, you're more than welcome to pray. God gives more grace to the humble, but the proud he resists. <clears throat> Oh, 
submit themselves to him. Remember how he told Peter and, and, and his brother as they were fishing, he said, come and follow me. I'll make you to become fishers of men. Jesus can make you brand new. He can make you brand new. Amen. God, God desires for us to have that assurance. He desires for us to have that peace and that rest in our life. And if you don't have it, you can simply have it by submitting yourself to God and God's word. We openly, we openly confess Jesus and we openly submit ourselves to Him. And, it, and, it, and it, has, it has a refining process on the heart when we do that. Because we decide that, you know what, I'm, I don't care what men think. It doesn't matter to me what men think or what people think. But I'm going to submit myself to God. Amen. Regardless of what anybody else says or does, I'm looking to Jesus. Amen. That's why we openly confess Jesus. Our open confession doesn't make us righteous, but submitting to God does. Amen. Submitting to Him does. Ready to praise the Lord? Can we sing yeah. to victory in Jesus? Yeah, and praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah. It's not too late to pray. Amen. It's not too late to pray. You can come and pray and you can talk with the Lord. And you can ask the Lord to help you be submissive to His Spirit. And He'll guide you in every footstep that you take. Just as He guided Joshua, just as He guided Jesus, He'll guide you. And He'll help you every day. Oh, story, how a Savior came from glory. How He gave His life from Calvary. To save a wrench like me, I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior.
blood which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, praise God. Thank you. Anybody have anything that you want to say? Anything you want to say for the Lord or be praise? Alrighty, everybody's hearts and minds are clear. Last chance. Alrighty, Brother Jim, would you lead us? Praise, praise the Lord! 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 Praise the Lord